granted in life for us to see the holy month Jumat Thani, Jumat Akhir and the sixth holy month in this ocean of Marifa in this lunar month and which is the Qamar, the moon and the month of the surah of the moon and which is a reality for us that we're traversing into the sun. And just recently they made a scientific vehicle that they say traversed into the sun and alhamdulillah that same theory is Shamsul Arifin is the sun of all knowledges and the reality and the source of, of all these realities that are emanating, the Divinely reality that emanate from the heart of the universal soul and that that is the sun for all created universes, not even the sun that we see here but the sun that is in the center of all created universes, we are traversing with our soul into the reality of that. And as a result Allah has for us to come to the 54th surah on the month of Wadu, the month of six and the reality of six in the huruf is a wow and everything is established from this ocean of Divinely love and only by that Divinely love I was a treasure wanting to be known. And Allah wants to be known in this Divinely ocean of ishq and muhabbat and we said before that it can only be dressed by the beautific character. If the character is gold it can carry that reality, if the character is plastic and styrofoam it burns right through, that reality burns through it and it's not a vessel in which to carry that reality. So the turuqs come to teach us the adab and the manners and then Allah has us on this month stopping at Surat Al-Qamar to remind us that your path is to be the moon. So exemplify yourself and take your example from my creation because Allah says the signs within you and signs on the horizon and many times they've taught that the sign upon the horizon is much easier to understand because people may not be reflecting internally truthfully to themselves. But on the horizon we can't manipulate. So the horizon teaches us because this is Allah's direct hand. So you look to the moon as what you should be. So it doesn't matter what a guru teach, what is this teacher teaching, what is that one teaching because everyone has a philosophy. But Allah's teaching that the teacher should be an exemplar and an example from the moon. And the teacher should not be claiming any light of his own, any power of his own, anything of his own. And if he does it right then you negate yourself and you're merely a reflection of the source and you are not the source. So the moon is giving us that example, we benefit from its light or our the tides of this earth go up and down, our, our blood, our psychology, everything is affected by moonlight. And you look at the moon and it claims nothing, it shows itself in a very casual appearance and that becomes the example of the path. That Allah on this journey you know you keep stopping at these different months, so when this tour stops on this month it's all about the understanding of the qamar and the moon, that your, your guidance and who you should be is like a moon that tested, tried because you look to the moon it's been battered, it has been attacked by every type of difficulty, there's no structures upon it. As a result it, it hasn't had a, a structure that's extremely visible, not like the earth and as a result it reflects the sunlight in perfection. And all of these the dajjal will be attacking, all these haqqaiqs. They'll describe the moon as something else, there's like a ship and a, and a spaceship that's flowing and there's this and there's that and 
every haqqaiq is going to come in a different direction and that becomes the great deceit. And Allah is reminding for us the shamsi wal qamar, shams is the diya and the fire is the fire that Nabi Musa was moving towards. And all of creation Allah describes to them that you move to that light but you have to have the character of the moon of qamar. So qamar nurun wa shamsun diyaun that the sun is a fire nar and the moon is a light of reflection not a source itself. And that's what we talked about the nights before of juzbah of magnetism. So you're not a source of knowledge, you're not a source of light because at this point Allah is clarifying before you go any further on your journey is that you're nothing. So you continuously negate the self that I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, whatever you bestow upon me it's merely a reflection from the source. And that's why the talk earlier was about magnetism. If you're not of a magnetic connection and you didn't make the connection and negate yourself, you're reflecting a little from the source but more from you. And that's why some people have little bit of understanding and they mix it into something as a confusing dish that nobody can get guided by and many will be lost by it. Because too much of themself is reflecting and little from the source. So the moon then is a proof that you have to have been tested. So you don't just appear on the scene and you go out and you say, I'm a moon, so no who smashed you? So what type of difficulties and calamities and testing and all sorts of… That's why the tariqah is based on tarbiyah. The tarbiyah is meant the shaykh when he signs an ijazah, he's basically signing that I have flipped this person all over the place. Put him in every type of difficult situation as a result they still came out with that credibility and as a result we are sending that support. So it's not something that's the whole understanding is that when you want to reach to a reality, the reality is teaching everybody about itself. That these are stages in which the servant negates themselves, they've been tested in negation, they've been tested with difficulties and their shaykhs taught them, be patient, have good character, talk kindly. Even they posted recently, we entered into this moon immediately people who are inspired and maybe not inspired but the shaykh's overwhelming inspiration pushes them and talks about who's one whom has good character. And it was a dialogue between Shaykh Nazim and Shaykh Dagestani. And Shaykh Nazim asked Shaykh Dagestani, who's somebody who has good character? And the person who has good character, does he complain? And Shaykh Dagestani's response is, absolutely not because they're talking of the good character of awliya, that the one whom been trained and has good character must always remind themselves there's no complaining. That the contentment of the servant is that if they know that they're submitting, they know they have a Divine love, they know that they're in the hands of Allah who are you complaining to and what are you complaining for? But if you're not one with good character he described then you're like a person with like boils and blisters all over you. That as soon as somebody touch you you're screaming and yelling all sorts of things because it's just you're, you're filled with that difficulty all over yourself. But the one whom is in, is in contentment and been trained with tarbiyah he knows that nobody going to relieve him. He doesn't need to tell everybody that they're in difficulty, 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 I can fix, I'm like this, I'm like that, I'm like this. Why? Because nobody can help him other than Allah So well, what's the purpose of the complaining? So it means all these are the characteristics of the moon. 
You know people want to complain and tell everybody their, their problems, their sickness, their difficulties. For what? Who can relieve it from you but Allah So the good character is then they learn not to talk. So they say, oh when this person's in difficulty you don't even know they're in difficulty so I always thought your condition was good. But that's what you're supposed to think because you're not the one who can help my condition or worsen my condition. So they, they live in an ocean of taslim in the hands of Allah or they wish and inspire to be like that and this is what their shaykhs taught to them. And then this is when they post that as a dalil to show us that in this month of the moon that when these difficulties coming, these testings are coming from the night they described and all these sicknesses Allah want to bring what's hidden within the servant and bring it out. What's sickness within them, if Allah doesn't send that light upon them that pushes out all the badness, Qujjal haqq wa zahaq al Right? So when the haqq is going to come and the month of Qamar is the lights of Allah reflect upon all of the moons of this nation. Their lights reflect upon this earth and the truth comes when it hits the falsehood of everybody's personality, they're not sitting there together happy. The light comes in and by its force pushes everything out blisters, boils, sickness, everything has to come out. Zahukan Allah that the falsehood you carry within us is all of a falsehood and it's nothing to be stand in the presence of the, the light of truth. It can't, it can't fight back. The falsehood has nothing that it can hold on to and immediately is obliterated coming out with all of these sicknesses and all these difficulties. So then this journey is into that light and into that reality and even Allah have servants that not been taught or, or they're, they're not understanding to tune in to get the understanding of their path and Allah loves His creation equally. So they're all going through it but sad for the one whom doesn't understand the situation because not following the coordinates of the heart to go and sit with those who have guidance. So the one whom Allah guides is a tremendous blessing because then they can stop and understand that every step of this difficulty, uh-huh, I'm not being attacked, Allah loves me and Allah wants me to be patient. So He gives us all these coordinates is a true, is a huge blessing in our lives. Because on the other side people are equally receiving all of these same difficulties but they have no understanding whatsoever what's going on and just from every direction there's some sort of craziness happening until they mentally break down, physically break down and every type of faculty within them is just not functioning anymore. Go in, go out, go in, go out, you're sick, you're cold, you lost your job, you lost your… They, they, people will jump off bridges. They can't sit at home, they can't do anything anymore. So the true ni'mat and the blessings of Allah that sit with them and they'll teach you what's coming, what tajallis are coming, what lights are coming, what, what verse of Qur'an is dressing, what chapter of Holy Qur'an is dressing this, this universe, this earth. Because those are the unspoken, uncreated words of Allah uncreated words of Allah that coming through the Muhammadan heart which means is the isharat and the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad for the entire universe. Fatihullah is in the heart of Prophet and that becomes the Qur'an once it is, it meets to the lisan and the, the tongue of that reality. When it meets the atiullah, the command of Allah it becomes a Tiya Rasul. Soon as Prophet ﷺ's isharat is coming out from his Divinely heart, the entire universe is taking its commands and those are all the ulul am 
from all the categories that Allah has created of the servants of the Divine, from the angels to the spirits to the jinn to the saints, all of them are following that command. So then that guidance to be understood that this month under the command of Holy Qur'an and Surat Al-Qamar and that Allah is sending these lights upon this earth and that to cleanse and wash out Fat Abwaab as sama we're opening these lights from paradises and from the soul's realities to wash out all the badness. Like when the house is dirty and you turn the hose on and everything you just wash out all the marble floors, wash everything out and all the dirt that is coming out because it's not going to be clean and that becomes the sicknesses of mankind these dirts. That they're, they're poisons and toxins that come out of their, their body and their spirit. So as a result then what coming in the next month is the holy month of Raja where the inner reality and the inner heart of the Divine, the Presence is going to begin to emanate. And what surah for Surat al-Rajab is munafiqeen because all this reality is based on the inner and not the outer. The last two, three weeks it's all about the inner. Hmm? The outer demon and the outer devil is not the one that you fear because the real fight is the inner devil, the inner hypocrite, the inner bad characteristic. If that one is not dealt with that will call all the outer devils, that will call all the sicknesses, that one will call all the difficulties to come. Because this insan and this human is like a castle asking for the Divinely Light to enter into it. But don't think that your castle is not being attacked, it has already an enemy inside trying to open all the doors for all the devils on the outside to come in. Come in and ravage this kingdom for this servant is going to fall. Because if he should reach his reality he's a king amongst men. It was a chess game, shatranj was that understanding, that's why Islam brought that. That you're a kingdom but yet not your king has arrived, right? You just have this Divinely Palace appearing on this earth because every human that arrived upon this earth was from a heavenly kingdom. The kings of paradise, the, 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 the beloved creation of Allah of God Almighty put them onto this earth so they're like a palace. And those whom they gave themselves to shayateen and to badness their palace became for nefarious and for demonic purposes and that palace was lost. But the battle is that your palace is to be clean and purified, your being to be clean and purified so that Allah God Almighty to place a king upon your throne, upon your heart. And when Allah knights you and gives you that kingdom, gives you that light, that's the hadith of Prophet that they're like a thousand men, that those of whom rijal who reached their ahad and their covenant, they are like a thousand men. Their uloom, their knowledge, their lights, their reality because on earth then they become crowned like a king. And that's the whole battle for the battle of, of uh, the insan and the person is within. So they're continuously fortifying, continuously battling all the creatures inside their castle. How can you fight outside when the creature already inside and smashing everyone, killing everything inside? You can't fight like that, nobody would fight like that, the fight is inside. And that's why Prophet described that the inner battle, why? Because in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad just the mere light of the prophetic reality annihilated all of that. Could you stand in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad 
and that light with love and bringing that love, that light would enter and annihilate everything. But he told the companions the time that when I'm not amongst you physically but I'm always with you, but when I'm not with you physically that is your greatest battle for the nations that are coming that will be following my nation. Why? Because they're, they got completely possessed with all sorts of shayateen and they're not bringing the light inside them. They don't have that reflection to, to, to destroy every type of evilness. So then they have to fight and go inside and fight and struggle and, and do their muraqabah, do their energy, do their practices and that was the reality of wudu, that was the reality of salah, that was the reality of everything. So these courses are teaching all the basic Islam but giving you the, the depth of its understanding. So that your nafs don't say, why I got a wash? Oh, Islam has washing. Oh, because it's all based on these energies. How could you not wash your house, your clothes, yourself, anything? It would be filled with filth. Then what would be the purpose of your, your praying if you're all filthied out? So it means the reality of wudu, the reality of salah, all of this is in these teachings of energy and, and the cleansing and, and destroying the inner enemy to bring out the outer reality and then begin to go after the outer reality because once the inner reality is being cleaned and those demons are lessened and destroyed, then what happens? Then there's a very powerful battle for the outside. So that's why then these difficulties, these testings and the people whom they're compliant, complacent or happy with their bad character, then that's a difficult, difficult thing. So people like it, they don't like it, they don't want to hear the uh, understanding and the, and the teachings, all of will clean. Because the bad character means there's still demonic forces inside and they're not letting go. And Allah will clean the servant. So people don't want to listen or listen it doesn't matter, this is just a ni'mat and a guidance from within the heavens that if you clean inside and take that path of spiritual cleansing then you have the ability maybe to survive the difficulties that are coming upon this earth and the ability to contain the lights necessary to be with Imam Mahdi salam and Mahdiyoon. Because this is a time of immense light and immense blessings coming upon this earth. And those lights are not going to be filled with the hypocrisies and, and dirtinesses and, and bad characteristics. Those will have also already gone to the different side. Those who give themselves to demonic forces then they have given themselves, there'll be no more grey, it will be white and black. Those whom have given themselves to the darkness they are fully committed to that darkness and those whom have given themselves to the light Allah will intensely purify them to be worthy of being in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi inshaAllah. We pray that Allah give us a hikmah and a wisdom and a himmah, a zeal in which to accomplish these realities that are coming in very strong. These next few months should be immensely, immensely strong. As you see the earth will be blanketed with this sickness as Allah cleans and cleanses all His creation. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun al Mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.